2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Suffering draws us to our need for Jesus. Paul shows us when he says, So, to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, Paul just told us how great Jesus has been to him, how great his ministry has been. He's seen visions. I mean, the guy's been to like the seventh heaven. He says, in order to keep me grounded, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, I had conversations, Paul remembers them all, that it should leave me. But he said to me, look, if you have the red print letter edition, this is Jesus. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I believe that this thorn that Paul had in his side was his conscience. Paul was a murderer before he became a Christian. Paul murdered the very relatives of people in the church. Probably ministered the gospel to some of their sons and daughters and husbands and wives. Paul put them on trial. Paul tried to destroy the church. But Paul, like all of us, wrestled with his sin. And I believe he was wrestling with his past. His conscience. That every time he was preaching the grace of Jesus Christ, Satan was reminding him, you're a murderer. You're a killer. Some of the very people you're preaching to, you destroyed their lives. And I believe he pleaded with God, please clear my conscience. And those of you who suffered through a guilty conscience have maybe been there before. And Jesus reminds him, my grace is sufficient for you. Humble yourself. Walk humbly before the Lord. You guys, sufficient is a really, really, really big word, isn't it? Let's be honest. If you're suffering, if you're going through hardship, to say that Jesus is sufficient, let me ask this question. If tomorrow morning we wake up and we've lost everything but Jesus... Answer the question. Let's say that tomorrow morning we wake up and we are given all things except for Jesus. You're given your daughter back, your son back, your health back, your money back, your job back, your wife back, your husband, your career, but no Jesus. Does that change anything? Is Jesus really sufficient for us? In suffering, we find out He is.